All right, continuing our coverage now of the breaking and, frankly, heartbreaking news out of the UK, the death of Queen Elizabeth II at age 96 after seven decades of rule. Pleased to welcome in 18-time New York Times best-selling author Jane Green, who was born in London, spent much of her life there and recently returned there over the pandemic. She also wrote the e-book Modern Fairy Tale about the royal wedding. Her latest book was Sister Stardust. Jane, it's wonderful to see you. I know this is a sad day for you. How will you remember the Queen? Well, she was just the most remarkable figurehead. Um, and and really the head of 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 everything in Britain um and it just it's very shocking you know these things we think we're prepared you, we all saw her greeting Liz Truss two days ago um and and you couldn't deny that that as as wonderful as she looked there was also something that was diminutive about her stature um and and even when you you looked at her and recognized she is 96 and and her health you know she is frailer than we had ever seen her it's still a shock when it actually happens um and i think we we truly are a nation in in mourning and a world in mourning particularly at this time where it feels that we we, the loss of an anchor such as the Queen is, is, uh, is a frightening thing to happen. It, it does still feel surreal to talk about her in, in the past tense. I know our, our family had a, a good cry about it this afternoon. Um, a lot of people wondering about her legacy. Obviously, she, she had a lot of milestones in her life, but then you look at some of the reaction also online talking about colonial, colonialism. How would you characterise how her legacy should be viewed? Well, I, I, I think that I, I couldn't speak really to that. I, I think, I, other than to say, you know, I think we are so quick to cancel our history. Um, and yet I think in order to prevent things from happening again, in order to prevent the terrible things that have happened in our history from happening again, we have to study it and we have to learn from it um, rather than cancel it out. And so, yes, of course, we, we know today we are living in very different times that, you know, colonialism um, you know, is not something that that we think could ever happen today. There are many other things that we think could not happen today. Um, and I would say as long as we continue to study the past and learn from those lessons, um, we can keep moving forward. Um, but, uh, but I think, you know, above all else, particularly in more recent times, the Queen was, she became um, really a symbol of, of, civility um and a, a and a symbol of strength um and i think that there there is a real loss of that as particularly at a time when so many things in life feel very fragile and very frightening and very divisive and she remained a rock through so much change and divisiveness and it's astounding to think from our perspective from truman to biden and yet she remained again steadfast can the monarchy and all of its traditions survive her passing um i i suspect that it will although there are many skeptics who believe that it won't but i think that um certainly if we if we go to Prince William and, and Kate, they are enormously beloved and, and have, as we've seen recently, been taking a much greater role in public life. Um, and I think the public have come to really rely on them, particularly with the loss of, of Harry and Meghan to America. Um, and I think there is still there is still a need for, for a figurehead. And, and frankly, when you look at how the country and how the world actually comes together for things like royal weddings. We see the pomp and circumstance and we see how much we all love it. Um, whether you're a monarchist or not, it does bring people together in a way like, that nothing else does. And obviously a lot has been said about how much Queen Elizabeth really modernized um, the monarchy. With now King Charles on the throne, with Queen, along with Queen Consort uh, Camilla Parker Bowles, what do you think the future of the monarchy looks like? Well, I, I think it'll be very interesting. I think that we will take some time to adjust 
to King Charles, King Charles III. Um, and, and that, I think, perhaps is the strangest thing, to go from having lived with a queen your entire life um, to suddenly have a a king and and I did read somewhere I've read actually a couple of places people have been posting on social media the queen is dead long live the king um and uh and it just it does feel very strange but Charles will have his Charles has always been a divisive character so so we will see what happens I prefer to think to project slightly in the future um to William and Kate but we will see we will see Charles is you know he is a diplomat and 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 he is a a very gentle man um and we will see what happens and Jane I want to end on a positive note in terms of some of the fondest memories and some of the milestones that the Queen has had? What really stands out to you? Well, I have to say, I'm going to share a personal memory, um, which is just that my I have a younger brother who is very active in Prince Charles's um, trust in one of his trusts. And I was scrolling through Instagram one day and there on my brother's feed was a picture of him shaking hands with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. That is my own personal favourite memory um, and the closest that anybody in our family ever got. Um, but she was just always enormously dignified and completely non-political and she really did live a life of service and and you know somebody texted me today and said gosh what a sad life you know she was never able to break out and the thing is she never knew any different and she really did devote her life to her country to her people and didn't reveal how she felt about anything political um we we just never knew she remained above the fray 